What's going on guys? So today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to review an application called HuntStand. So if you're constantly trying to figure out the wind speed ahead of time, if you're trying to figure out how to get into a hunting area, if you're trying to find out how you can better approach a certain hunting stand, that's what I'm gonna cover in the video today. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention so you can see how you can utilize this application, how I do. I'm no expert, but I think it could help. Stay tuned. Okay guys, as promised, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna go through and show you what hunt stand looks like. And it's gonna be my review of it, honestly, because I've been using it quite a bit and I feel like I enjoy it at this point enough that it would only be fair to share it with you guys and to show you what I think of it, how I use it, and maybe it'll help some of you guys and what you're trying to accomplish in the woods. And so I do need to point out though that uh, that I am not associated with Hunt Stand in any way other than just a consumer. And so they're not paying me for this. They're not asking me to do this. I'm just doing this because I feel like it's a great application that is helpful. And so I use it for a number of different things, which I'm gonna show you here once I get into the application. And so I think that you'll see some of the benefits if you're not already using this app uh, afterwards. So uh, you can see that it's on uh, my screen right here. And it, this is what the application looks like. I don't know if you can see the circle. I think you should be able to, but this is what it looks like right here. And uh, you can get the free option and uh, or you can pay. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't check to see what I paid for because I did pay for the app and some of the more advanced features, but I tell you what I'll do is I will link up the cost for the paid version in the uh, in the notes down below, in the de description below. And so that way you guys can check that if you wanna actually go and do that. So I'm just gonna make a note of that. Okay, um, so let's get into the app and I'll show you what I use it for. I use it for pretty basic stuff, right? And so I think you can get as complex as you wanna get with this ultimately. And, uh, you know, if you're using this for any sort of like whitetail hunting, then you can use it for the soul lunar and, you know, where you're at with the waxing moon. You know, a lot of people swear by that. And I've read mixed reviews. And you know what? I've seen in this last this last season here in Michigan, I've seen some, I don't know, positive things, maybe promising things with paying attention to the moon. Uh, but I honestly, I don't know as much as I could. And uh, I'm definitely not considered a an expert whitetail hunter. And so, you know, it's an area that I'd like to get into more. So, but for this review, uh, because I'm using this primarily for coyote hunting, uh, right now anyways, I want to go through and tell you how I use it for coyote hunting. And uh, the, both before I am uh, going out to my spot, but then also while I'm in the woods, I use this as well. So I'll show you how I, how I use it for both of those areas. So first though, what I need to do before I do anything else is check to see if my different areas, my different stands are going to be even uh, you know, huntable, right? So I'm checking the wind more than anything else, just like with anything else, any other game that I'm, I'm hunting, I'm checking the wind. And this app makes it really easy to beforehand uh, check my wind. And so that's good for a couple different reasons. Uh, the most obvious one being, <clears throat> excuse me, the most obvious one being uh, you don't want to get winded by uh, the animal that you're hunting, right? And so you're going to check where your wind cone is, which I'll show you here in a second. But then also, additionally, uh, you want to be able to plan how you get into your spot because of the wind as well. And so I'll show you how that's helpful right now. So as you can see, though, before I get into into the actual uh, uh, the uh, wind portion of it, up here, it's got this little drop-down menu. This is where you can set... Uh, these different uh, these different hunt areas. So, you know, I'm kind of risking it by showing you guys some of the areas that I hunt. So, you know, if you do see this and live near me, do me a favor. Don't just bombard the area. Or if you do, I mean, it's state game. It's a state game area. It's state land. So, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it, right? And this is a risk I'm taking by showing you guys this app. But, uh, you know, if you live in this area and any of these are local uh, and you go out there, just all I ask is, be respectful, which is a given, right? Because, you know, whenever I get out to an area, uh, you know, I don't ever I don't ever bother somebody if I see that there is a different car in the area when I'm coyote hunting because coyotes cover so much ground 
uh, and they occur, they are territorial over such a large area. If I see a car there, I'm just assuming that they're coyote hunting right now, and I don't I don't bother them or whatever else they're doing. I just give them their space, right? And so you're probably not going to end up in that area. But if you do, let's say that you just get out of the woods, you know, and you stop in, you're you're roaming around in one of these areas, and we run into each other. Say hi, I guess. You know, whatever. Anyways, I digress. So here's the thing, guys. You can check your area uh, through this little menu, right? So you you dedicate these areas as uh, as areas that you can hunt. I'm not sure why I have so many of these repeated in here. I think that's like an error today in the app. But <clears throat> you name these whatever you want, right? And so these are just geographical locations on the map. When you're ready to check an area, right, all you need to do is you need to tap on the area. And down here, you can see it says this hunt zone has not been synchronized. That's because I just opened this app on this phone for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and sync it. And then this will give me all the info uh, from my other phone and my tablet because I have this on my tablet and my phone. Actually, two phones and a tablet now. So, so that synced it up, right? So this says weather updated never. Um, I want to go ahead and I want to update the weather. Um, and because I just installed this for the first time, it's going to say that you can view weather related to your selected hunt area. Of course, it includes the current conditions, a 72-hour forecast, and a five-day forecast. That is actually very helpful if, if you don't just have unlimited times to hunt, right? So you can plan ahead a little bit. I'm going to skip the rest of it, though. Okay, so this is showing, uh, you know, what the current weather is. It's showing the hunt cone, right? It's showing uh, the option for 72-hour graphs. Uh, which gives you the time, of course, and then uh, you know, with wind speed, you know, chance of precipitation and cloud cover, and you can adjust according to the times, right? And this adjusts for the time according to the day and things like that. So it's pretty cool. I recommend going through and checking that out just to give you a good idea when you're planning, right? So I'm going to back out of this now that I've, I've got the weather updated, as you can see down here. Uh, I, I might be going to this hunt area, which I've selected up here. So I'm going to go into the hunt zone. The hunt zone... This shows you the map, right? So you can see the map here. And then it also allows you, uh, allows you to zoom in and zoom out accordingly, all right? So you can find your spot. And I'm going to hunt in this area here. It doesn't look that big, but it's actually pretty vast. If you've looked at a map for any length of time planning ahead, then uh, you realize that this is a pretty decent-sized map. So anyway, or not map, but a de pretty decent-sized area, rather. So what I'm going to do first is I want to check to find out, can I hunt this area today, right? So... I like to sit, if I can, over in the this area. You can see the little circle, I think, on the screen. I like to sit over in this area. And mainly because I, I have to park down here. This is the parking. So when I get into this area, I can't just cross this area if I want to be quiet, if I want to just be uh, inconspicuous, you know what I mean? And so I, like the easiest thing for me to do is either come in and go over here or come in and go over here, right? And so I usually like to hunt over here. Let's check to see what the wind speed or what the wind direction is. Pretty good. So this means that what I can do is I can hunt, or rather I can sit right where I want to sit, and it's going to blow my wind away from where I think the coyotes are probably going to come from. Obviously, I don't know. Just based on my scouting, uh, this looks like it would be good. So I scouted the area, and all the sign that I see seems to indicate that the opposite side of this this area is where I'd see the action, right? And so this is good. I can I can walk down this little road, and then I can cut in here and not have to worry about my scent hitting any of this open area. So this is really good. But now this is for the this is for right now. So I want to adjust it for today. So I what I did was I tapped on. I tapped on this little section where it says Sunday, down here in the bottom right-hand corner. I tapped on that part of the graph, and that brings up Sunday, 12-hour wind speed. So I want to drag this little circle over here to about 7, 7 p.m., because that's when I'm going to be in the woods, roughly. that would give me about an hour to be able to set in the woods, right? And so that's what, I, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out there, set for about an hour, and uh, see if I can call in some coyotes. But at that time, it looks like they're going to we're going to have 10 mile an hour winds, which is right in where I want it to be. It's going to have the direction that I want. That's not changing at all. So that's going to be great. So I'm probably going to hunt this area. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check one more area because that's kind of a far drive for the night. I'm going to check here, this other area, faster state game area. Okay, 
for some reason, this didn't zoom in the way it should. So I'm going to scroll down here because I know where it's at. Zoom in. <clears throat> okay. This uh, little marker that you see, and I'll cover this in a second, I put that in there. That's so that I can find this spot easy on the map. This is uh, an area that I haven't been able to scout as much as I'd like. So this, if I go here tonight, it would be kind of like a blend between scouting and hunting. Uh, mostly hunting, though. <laughs> All right, let's just find out if it's going to be any good. I'm going to tap on it. And, you know, I think that this would be good based on based on what I see here, right? You know, when I, when I look out this direction, you know, I see houses over here and a lot of woods over here. And then there's some water sources running through here, right? So to me, I think this area would probably have coyotes coming from this general area because they have a lot of cover. They have water sources running through it. And they're not getting bothered by some of the neighbors over here. So my thought is they're probably going to come from this direction. I don't know yet until I start really kind of paying closer attention to detail while I'm out here. And I've only been to this spot uh, once. But the wind speed based on that theory is good. So I could go to this area as well. It's easy to get to um, and my I wouldn't get winded, right? So here's the thing. This area, let me just go ahead and do something here. This will make it a little bit easier. This area, I can, I can hunt that area and access the um, access my hunting spot very easily because of the uh, because of the location, right? I'm, I'm going to show you where I hunt here. I'm just using this because it's easier to see. I can park here, and then I can walk down here and cut in here, and then right up in here, and sit right there. And that whole time, my my wind or my my scent rather is blowing this way. And I think all the coyotes over here. I don't know, but based on the, the scouting I've done prior to, it looks like that would be the case. So that is a great area today as well, which I may go there because it's a little bit closer. We'll see. So now I know that this is a good, both of these areas that I checked so far are good for wind. So that opens up quite a, quite a bit of option for one night, right? I'm not going to be running all over tonight because I only have a little bit of time. Uh, so that's how you use the wind uh, or the hunt zone section of the app rather to check your wind. And so, um, <clears throat> another thing I really like about this application is the fact that I can set markers. And so that's done up here in the, uh, mapping section. And whenever I'm out scouting, it's important to be able to, as I'm looking for different sign and, uh, looking for trails, looking for, you know, places to sit. It's important to, to mark those areas because then the more information I have, the better I can plan my trips and the smarter I can get. And it's the easier it's going to be for me to outsmart these, <clears throat> these coyotes. And everyone on this video knows that they're, they're stinking smart. So, <clears throat> so let's just say that I'm going to go to the Vassar State game area, right? This here, this is a marker. If you tap on it, it says, uh, Wells Road 1. So, that's just what I labeled it for my hunting spot. And so if I tap on it, you can see that I took a note, inspect water in surrounding area. So I wanted to find out, is this a true water source or are those, uh, are those areas where it's showing a, a stream or a river, are they just kind of like dried up and they were like ditches that are, are only good during the summer from farms? You know, there's a lot of different things that could be happening. So I wanted to check that out. <clears throat> That's a good feature about about these markers is I can set these markers, take some notes on what I think I should do or what I see and then move on. Right. But let's say that I am hiking this area and I get there and, um, you know, I need to, I need to set a marker because maybe I see something there. Right. Um, I could very easily, I could very easily set a marker. Uh, and also, I wanted to show you that you could like filter according to the markers. That's what's in this menu that you saw me tap on on the side. Uh, whoops. <clears throat> I got to zoom back in. I mistakenly backed out of everything. My bad, guys. Okay, so <clears throat> let's say that I'm hiking along and, uh, you know, I'm on this, on this far bottom side or something like that. And I find scat, right? So I'm like, okay, boom. 
Um, I need to add a new marker. Oops. We're going to say... Uh, done. Cancel. Back. Whoa, my phone freaked out there. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. It looks like it's going to work all right. I keep having an issue with this for some reason. <clears throat> the app is normally pretty smooth, though. I will be, I will be pretty honest about that. It normally doesn't freak out like that. So this is a little bit of an older phone. Okay, I'm zooming back in. Let's do a marker. And it wants me to add it on that same spot for some reason. I don't know why that is. There we go. <clears throat> so I tapped where I think I see uh, some scat. So I to add the marker, select marker type. It gives you a list. So I'm going to go down and look for scat. There's scat. Name. Coyote. And then comment. Let's say... Um, in, in the scat there is, there is deer hair, so we'll say deer hair, uh, and then also, uh, you know, I don't know, berries. It's, there's no berries in Michigan right now because it's barely spring, but <clears throat> you could inspect it if you're, uh, if you're really looking at the details, save it. <clears throat> and then there it is, and then it shows it on the on the map. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on with these markers with time. And you can see the frequency at which these animals you're hunting are there, and you can also uh, just kind of <clears throat> make it so that uh, um, you have a greater overall picture of what's going on. So that's markers. The other thing that I really like is that if, let's say that I'm not sure that I've ever, or I'm not sure of this area too much, and I don't have any idea if there's scat, you know, and I don't have an idea if it's going to be a good area to hunt, what I can do is say, okay, so on the map it says that there's a parking area here. Well, let's see. <clears throat> Maybe I need to find out how long of a walk is this going to be, so I can plan how much time. So I want to say path, because I want to find out how long of a walk is this going to be to this spot. So I mark, a, I mark where I park. Okay, mark where I think I'm going to walk down to. <clears throat> okay. Okay, go down to here, then into here, over to here. <clears throat> That's roughly what I'd be, I'd be, I'd be walking, right, right in that area. So down here, one thousand two yards. No, that's not right. One one thousand point two yards. <clears throat> not that far. So it gives me an idea. Okay, well that's really not that far of a walk, so not that big of an issue. I don't need to plan anything special for getting there. Great if you've never been to the spot. Also, let's say that maybe you are hunting this area, and maybe you're going to hunt this area over here, and you can see, okay, there's some houses over here. Well, with my rifle, a 22 250 uh, obviously it's a, a center fire rifle, my bullet could easily travel that distance if there was some freak accident, right? And that's not what I want to have happen because that's how uh, you get in trouble, and that's how you injure people, and so on and so forth. I'm just preaching to the choir about safety, so I'm not going to continue to do that. But if you want to get an idea of whether or not it's safe, right, you can just go ahead and say, how big is this area? So I know whether or not it's safe and whether I know whether or not I, I will have an issue with, uh, you know, coyotes living there or not. So I'm going to add a point there. This is actually pretty difficult to use, so forgive me if I, if I just totally mess this up, but... Um, I, it's like we it's weird it's like you're working in a in a mirror you know or something like that All right so then you go like this I actually think I'm getting it pretty good this time and then boom and down here seven thousand two hundred and forty three yards right or six hundred and fifty three acres the bigger thing is the acres so that's a decent chunk of uh whoops 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 see it's kind of hard to do if you're not there we go 646 acres is the total of this area. Not bad. Well, now, okay, it's a decent enough area for uh, for there to be some sort of a coyote, right? And so I'm going to say uh, done, and we're going to say clear all. And now, let's say that I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to sit near this, what looks to be a uh, water area. I'm sitting there. Here's a house. What's the distance? 1,323 yards. 
that's a good amount of space. Now, I'm not going to want to shoot that direction, of course. You would never want to do that. But it still makes me feel better about the area, right? And it makes me feel like I'm doing my due diligence to make sure I'm not injuring somebody. So that's that's another good thing for the uh, for the measurement. Additionally, um, um, you know what? Honestly, that's really all I use before I go out. I don't really use anything else. Um, you could get into some of the more uh, finite details. If you really wanted to check like parcel info, you could check parcel info. That is definitely helpful if uh, you want to, to get permission to hunt an area, then you can get a name of somebody potentially uh, <clears throat> by just tapping on the map. I have noticed that it, with this, with the parcel information, um, not everybody is reporting their info uh, appropriately or something. I'm not really sure if it's, if it's the cities that... You don't report it, or I, I honestly don't know, but I've noticed that the further north I go in the state of Michigan, the fewer parcels that are, are listed in this. So, um, you know, it's helpful sometimes, but other times not. So if I just tap an area, right, it says you have 10 parcel requests remaining. You can buy more, of course, and it says, would you like to request parcel information? I'm not going to do that now because I have no particular reason uh, for getting information on that parcel, but it will show me down here uh, who the owner is and the area and the perimeter of their parcel uh, if, I, if I decide I want to do that. Uh, I don't really ever use that too much because I honestly just use the, uh, I use the, I think it's called GIS information from most counties and it's free a lot of times or it's like five bucks if you want to buy it a lot of times from the county. More accurate and if you get in, a, in an argument or a tiff while you're out hunting because you, someone thinks you're on their property, then you've got better info. So anyways, I digress. So, guys, that's basically what I use uh, on this app. Um, you know, there are some other cool things like you can set tasks ahead of time. So if you're in a planning quite a bit, you can go out to these areas that you hunt and you can, you know, set a task. And, you know, it will show you what's outstanding according to what you plan, what you've completed. Obviously, this lets you know how much time you're spending in an area, you know. You don't want to be spending all kinds of time in an area just spreading your scent all over, obviously. And so this allows you to get an idea uh, on what you've done and so you're not overdoing it by accident or just forgetting. <clears throat> the other thing you can do is kind of treat this like a social app, and I don't ever do this. I have my one friend that's uh, that's registered in this section, but we don't ever, you know, he doesn't use it that much. Whoops. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just there. Um other than that, I mean, there's sightings, you can set harvests, you can share your stuff. I don't do any of that. I use it for the stuff that I mentioned, and that's pretty much it, guys. <clears throat> and so that's that's all. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, feel free to comment in the section below, obviously, where the comments are. And then also, uh, I'm interested to know if you guys have used any of these other features quite a bit. And if you have, uh, how have you found them beneficial? Also, I wouldn't mind hearing some stories about how you've used this and made it effective for your hunt and has it made you more effective as a hunter. That'd be interesting to know as well. So just put that in the comments below if you, uh, if you want to do that. It'd be very helpful for me and everybody else, of course. So everyone would be grateful. With that, guys, I'm just going to leave it at this because it's 22 minutes into this recording. That's a pretty long review. So thanks for sticking with me if you did. Uh, and I'm going to put up reviews kind of like this on things that I'm using otherwise. And so check those out and uh, we'll go from there. So I appreciate your time today and have a good one.